Greetings, and welcome to the Carbonite demonstration of Carbonite Cloud Migration. In this short demo, we're going to go ahead and show you how easy it is to migrate from anywhere into AWS for a Windows server in this example, utilizing Carbonite Cloud Migration. So let's go ahead and get started. The first place you want to go to if you want to go ahead and start one of those cloud migrations is to migrate.doubletake.com. Go ahead and sign in with an account or create an account if you don't already have one. And once you sign in, you are first shown this What's New page. This What New page is going to tell you all the information about anything that's been changed or updated since the last time you logged in and then once you go ahead and do that you're ready just to move on from there. With the Carbonite cloud migration it makes it really easy to orchestrate and to migrate into select clouds such as AWS, Azure, vCloud Director and OpenStack and we actually have built-in orchestration and automation. It's through this one web page and it's very mobile friendly you can even do a migration on your phone. If I go to the dashboard here we just get a quick overview of everything that's going on in the environment. I don't really have anything going on right now, but I, you can also get additional information, get notifications. I can also get my downloads. I can go to the documentation. Of course, I can log out. The first thing you want to do when you're going to do a migration into the cloud is we need to set up environments. So let's click on the environments tab and I have a lot of them here already. We have about eight different environments that you can add and if you want to add one simply click add and you provide a name, the provider, Active Directory, Amazon Web Services, Custom, Azure, and there's a couple there, OpenStack, vCloud Director, and vSphere. Some of these are target environments, some of these are source environments, some of them are both. And if that environment is behind a firewall, then of course you can also specify a proxy. A proxy is a Windows 2012 R2 machine or higher with a small install on it that basically listens to Carbonite Cloud Migration and does the tasks that are assigned to it. That way we don't have to punch a whole bunch of holes in the firewall in order to get your migration into the cloud. So what I have here, I have a lot of different environments. The two that we're going to basically be using today is my AWS one. So I'll go ahead and click on that one and we can see there's my AWS one, the provider, I have my access key and the secret key. So I provide all that information and there is that environment. The second environment that we're going to be talking about today is the custom environment. My source server is a Windows 2012 R2 server. It happens to be in Azure, but we can see here the Azure Classic and Azure Resource Manager can only be target environments. So I'm doing a custom environment, and when I add the server, I'm going to add it by its IP address. So once you have all of your environments set up, now we just simply go to the server section. The server section is when you're going to do all of your discovery of all the servers and it's going to do an inventory of them to find out what operating system they are, memory, CPU, disk size, things like that. And we're going to go ahead and migrate this server. First and foremost, I'm going to go ahead and delete this one and I'm going to show you how to add one when you're using the custom environment. So what we want to do is go ahead and click discover. And when you do a discovery, it says, oh, what environment are we discovering from? And it shows all the source environments that I have, I'm going to go ahead and say custom. When you do a custom discovery, you can actually discover by specific IP address or you can even talk to an entire subnet. But with server, I can put in any IP address that I want. I'm going to go ahead and paste the IP address of the machine in Azure and then I'm going to provide my username and password. This is the local username and password so we can actually talk to the operating system and find out all of its details. Once you do that, you specify whether it's a Windows or Linux machine because we can migrate both. This is a Windows machine that we're doing, so I'm going to go ahead and say Discover. Once I do that, it's now going to talk out to that IP address. It's going to gather information. It's going to authenticate to it, and then it's going to pull in all the information about CPUs, memory, disk size, things like that. At that point, we're ready to migrate. When you're ready to migrate, you can select one, two, all of them, and you can go ahead and migrate in waves. Now, the other nice part about this is that this is also very friendly if you're a managed service provider because you can have multiple environments for all your different customers and it's truly multi-tenant aware. So I'm just going to migrate this one server. So I'm going to select this one and say migrate and it's very simple in what it's doing. So go ahead and give it a name for the migration and what's a group name because it's assuming you want to do more than just one. I'm going to go ahead and give it the one test and then of course where are you going? So if you did not have an environment, it wouldn't show it in here, but I do have lots of different environments and we're going into AWS. 
It authenticates to AWS, and now it says where do you want to go in AWS. Let's go ahead and go into the US West Oregon region. And now we can see we can create public IP addresses for our target servers or not. We can automatically cut over. That means as soon as it's done copying all the data, it's going to do the cut over. I would only recommend that maybe if you're doing a test. Other than that, you'll typically want to wait for some downtime like a night or a weekend. Shut down the source server. If you uncheck this one, then it does become a test and it leaves production up and running. And then, of course, we want to compress data because we're going from Azure to AWS in this example. Go ahead and say next, and it's going to show you the information about the system. Now we see we have a C drive and a D drive. Because this is Azure, that D drive is a page pool. So we want to go ahead and we can either leave that or we can go ahead and deselect the whole volume if we want. I'm going to go ahead and leave that, but it shows me what is there. It has a 127 gig drive here, a 70 gig drive there, and here's the IP address of how to get to it in Azure. So it's just showing me that information about what it is and what it's doing. And then I go ahead and say next. Now it's going to show me the available configurations in AWS. So it's examined what the source was as far as its memory, disk, and CPU, and it says, okay, Based on that information, we recommend an M3 medium with one core 3.75 gigs of memory. That's fine. I could actually change it or go up or down as I want, but it picks the instance that most closely matches production. This is the display name it's going to give in AWS. Now, the actual server name will be whatever the server name is in production. So this may be different, but this is the display name in AWS, and this is the template it's using from AWS as well. Now we get to the configuration part. We can go ahead and specify a network, a subnet, and we can also specify credentials. It's going to go ahead and use the local administrator username, but it wants a password. Now this password is a temporary password because it's going to go ahead and deploy a machine, get the default password out of that, go ahead and log in, change it to this password that I specify, but once the migration is complete, whatever usernames and passwords that were in production are going to be the ones that you're going to use to access the system. So just type in a password here. If you type in a password that is too weak, it will warn you because we are bound by the rules of the target cloud environment like AWS. So if it's not too weak, it'll go ahead and allow me to create the job. All right, so my job is created. We've gone automatically to the migration section here, and now it starts all of its automation process. So we can actually go right over here and we can look at it and we can see everything that's going on with this particular job. I click on the server and then I go into the progress and we can see that it's creating the target instance in AWS, provisioning, it's getting the IP address, it's going to go ahead and install the product and actually the product it uses is Carbonite Move which is that migration from anywhere to anywhere but it installs Carbonite Move on the production machine, installs Carbonite Move on the destination machine, it creates the job, it starts the mirroring and the replication. All of that is done automatically for us. Let's go check out AWS and see what's happened. I've gone into my AWS console and we can see a new machine is currently initializing. This is the machine that we just created with the Carbonite Cloud migration. And once this is done and it's gone ahead and provisioned the machine, that's when we do the installations and creating all the jobs. Once that occurs, we're going to go ahead and start the mirroring and replication process, and then that will go ahead and synchronize the data. Keep in mind, we didn't do any installations of the Carbonite replication product beforehand. We have not taken production down at any time, so this has zero impact on production to do the discovery, to do the installation, to create the job, to do the mirroring, or the replication. All that is done automatically. I've gone back to Carbonite Cloud Migration, and now we're really just at a point where we want to go ahead and wait for all of the steps to be done automatically for us. At that point, we can go ahead and click on Actions, and we're going to have the ability to cut over. But at this point, if I wanted to look at the log or connect via RDP to the source or just delete the job, I could do that. But let's go ahead and wait for all the tasks to complete and get into a good state and then we're going to go ahead and come back we're going to make some changes to some data and then we're going to go ahead and do the cutover and see how quickly and easy it is to migrate into AWS with Carbonite Cloud Migration and we're back 
What's happened during this time is that it has mirrored and synchronized all the data over from the production environment to my destination environment. And now that the mirror is complete, it's continuing the real-time byte level replication to keep everything in sync. If we click on the job, we can see that it is now in a monitor situation when I go to the progress. It's waiting for us to cut over at any time, but it's again keeping everything in sync until we're ready to do that. If you want, you can also click on the log and get additional details. Now we're ready to cut over, but before we do, what I want to do is I want to go to production environment and I want to go ahead and make some changes to some data so we can see those changes go over and of course they will be immediately available after the cutover. I'm on my production server. Again, this is the server in Azure. So what we're going to do is we're just going to simply create a folder in here. And we're going to go ahead and get into this folder. And let's go ahead and see if there's some data that I would like to copy. So let's take this temp folder, for example. And now let's go into my new folder and let's go ahead and paste that there. We'll do that a couple times. And I've made several copies of this data now. So let's go ahead and immediately go back to the console and let's go ahead and do our cutover. Remember, the cutover can occur at any time. Now, of course, typically this is going to happen during downtime, like at night or weekend. But let's go ahead and do the cutover now. When we get the cutover, it says, hey, this is the source, this is the target, and I want to confirm that's the one I want to cut over, and it is. And now we can go back into the job and we can see the actual cutover occurring, and we can see the progress, or we can actually look at the log on this one. What's really happening in the background is first and foremost is the source machine is being shut down. We don't do anything to the source machine. We don't delete it or modify the data. We simply shut it down. That way, if anything does happen and maybe the migration is not going to happen that weekend and some of the machines have been migrated and some haven't, all you have to do is power on production. The second thing that's going to happen is all the action is going to happen on the target. We're going to replace the operating system. We're going to replace the registry. We're going to take all these files in a staging folder. We're going to move those into its production folder. We're going to install all the applications. And then, of course, we're going to go ahead and shut down the machine, restart it, and it will come up as the production server with the production applications and the production data. The only difference is it will be in AWS instead of Azure. This process takes just a few minutes for that to occur. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and wait for those few minutes. We're going to come back. This cutover will be done and we'll go into that environment and we'll check it out. Okay, and we're back. Our failover is complete. It's been just a few minutes, and if we want to go in here, we can go to the progress of it, and we can see everything that happened. One of the nice things it did, it actually changed the Windows license scheme to match AWS is licensing because that's what you're already paid for. So that was the last thing that happened and now it's complete. Let's go check out what actually happened. So if I go into my Azure instance, we can see that this machine, this Win 2012 R2-1 AZ is stopped. And now if I go into my AWS instance, here it is. It's running. It's Everything's been going on. Actually, it's been running for a little bit now, and we can go ahead and connect to it. So let's go ahead and do that connect to it, and let's go ahead and see what's going on with that environment. All right, we're now prompted for credentials. I put in those temporary credentials beforehand, but now it's the original credentials that was used on the machine. So I can't use administrator because it was an originally an Azure machine. So I have to do a, use a different account now, and that different account was actually called trainer, and I typed in the password. We are now logged in and it says, hey, what happened previously? It was shut down unexpectedly. So we put in whatever comment we want here. We can actually see the, the exact same setup as we had before. We can go into the new folder. We can see all of those copies. And again, now I'm connected to that Amazon instance. But notice there's no the EC2 default folders. So this is actually the instance in Azure, but it's just been simply ported over to AWS. If I go back to the Carbonite cloud migration here, what I can do, of course, I can look at the log. I can also download the RDP file from here as well. But really, since our migration is complete, the only thing left for me to do is to delete my job. And that is the end of the migration. This brings us to the end of the Carbonite cloud migration demonstration. To learn more and to stay informed, please visit us at Carbonite.com. I'd like to thank you for your time and have a great day.